So you people want to see a video that covers everything about Premiere Pro that you need to know as beginners? Well, I guess you have come to the right place. Hey guys, I'm Saurav, welcome to the channel. Today we are going to learn how to edit videos in Premiere Pro from start to finish. If you are using Premiere Pro for the first time or you have used it before but you want to know how to do it in a better manner, this video is for you. As usual, it's going to be a very in-depth tutorial. I'm going to start with the basics and break down the complete user interface for you people. Because it might be a bit overwhelming in the beginning but once you understand the basics, you will realize it's not that difficult. So we will go slow but we will cover everything, right? So without wasting any time, let's get started. First, I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to leave all the settings at default and click on OK. Now I'm going to import the videos I want to edit. So go to File, Import. You can select multiple files or if you have organized the files in the folder and you want to import the whole folder as it is, just click the folder and import it. If you have the files from multiple cameras or from different dates, this will help you to stay organized. You can also select imported files and group them into a folder after importing them. Just select the files, right click, new bin from selection. Now I'm done importing the videos. To start editing, I'll just drag the videos to the timeline. I want to trim this video. I will use the razor tool and split the video into multiple parts and I can now select these parts and move or delete them individually. Whenever I'm editing the videos, I like to line up the videos into the timeline and make the necessary cuts before I move forward. A lot of the times like right now, I record my audio and video separately. The audio from the original doesn't sound quite good, but it will help me to sync with the higher quality audio. You don't have to sync the audio and video manually. Just drag all the files you want to sync and make sure the audio files are placed in different audio tracks. So A1 track consists of the original audio from the video and A2 consists of the high quality audio. I'll select all the files, right click, synchronize. Audio track channel 1. That's it. Premiere Pro will sync it automatically for you. Now when I play the video, I hope you enjoyed the small sequence. I Both the audio will play simultaneously, but that's not what I want. I will mute the A1 track and now I have the video and the external audio synced and good to go. I hope you enjoyed the small sequence. So this is the A roll and while I'm talking, I want the B roll to appear at the same time. So there are two options. Either you delete the main video and put the secondary video in place of that. But then if you want to make certain changes, it becomes difficult. What I would recommend is place the video on top of it on a different layer. This doesn't change anything, but if you want to make any changes later, it will be much more convenient. I have seen the audio and video. But now, if I move the video, the original audio moves with it, but not the external one. To fix that, first let's get rid of the original audio. The reason why the original audio moves along with the video is, it is linked to the video. So right click and then unlink. Now you can move this video freely, but we want the external audio to move as well, otherwise it won't be in sync. For that, right click and link them. We did the exact opposite. And now these two layers are linked to each other. Any changes you make on this layer will also affect this particular layer. If you want to use effects and transitions in your videos, there are a lot of inbuilt effects in Premiere Pro. Go to the effects panel on the top. Here you have different audio and video effects. One of the inbuilt effects I use a lot is Warp Stabilizer for stabilizing shaky videos. It works really well and similarly, a lot of the inbuilt effects are quite helpful. You have simple transitions as well. Again. Nothing too complex, but good for beginners. Just drag the transition between the two videos and you can also adjust the length of the transition. You can actually double click on the transition and set an exact duration for it. You have audio transitions as well. Again, very simple, but very effective. If you want to color grade your videos, go to the color panel if you can't see the Lumetri scopes, just click here. Right click and you can choose what graphs do you want to see. To adjust the colors, you have the Lumetri color on the right side. And the reason I'm not going to cover color grading in this video is because I have a separate in-depth color grading video on my channel. The link will be in the description. You also have built-in LUTs in the effects tab. Just drag them and if you want to make any further changes on the left side, you get the same Lumetri color options. 
So you have used a LUT, but you can make adjustments on top of it. Now we are going to learn how to add motion to your videos. But before that, it's time to thank the sponsors of the video and that is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community and I have been using Skillshare from a long time. You want to learn filmmaking, video editing, music, animation, Skillshare is the place to go because they have a lot of classes belonging to different genres. Recently, I joined this class by JR Ali on how to shoot intros for the videos. In this class, he covers how to plan the intro and then shoot it and later organize it and edit it to get the final outcome. This helped me a lot. If you want to learn new stuff and you want to upgrade your skills, I will definitely recommend Skillshare. For the first thousand people to click on the link in the description below, you get a free Skillshare trial membership. If you're taking a yearly subscription, you're paying less than 800 Indian rupees or less than $10 and you get unlimited access to all the classes. So if you're interested, the link is in the description below. Let's add some motion to the videos. This is a stable shot, but we're going to add some motion digitally with the help of keyframes. I'm in the effects tab and I have selected effect controls. Under motion, we're going to scale the shot at about 150% and set the X and Y positions by changing the coordinates. Now when I play the video, it's still a stable video because none of the values are changing. So we are going to set a keyframe by clicking here at the start of the video. Then we will move ahead and set more keyframes and change the values. Now when you play the video, you will see movement because the values are changing gradually from one keyframe to the other. Closer the keyframe, faster is going to be the movement Farther it is, slower is going to be the movement. You can also set scale keyframes to make it look much more dynamic. So we want a zoom out effect starting from 150% and ending at 100%. You can change the rotation as well and also the opacity. So if you want a complete black screen for example and eventually it reveals the clip, set the opacity to 0 at the start and then 100 where you want it to reveal completely. So once you understand how to use keyframes, the possibilities are endless. The next option we have here is time remapping. Time remapping is going to help you speed up or slow down the footages. Many people also call it speed remapping because you're actually changing the speed. So let's do a basic one first. I have a video shot at 120 fps right here. Right click on the small fx icon and choose time remapping speed. You can move this line up to make the video faster and down to make it slow. But we want to keep it fast initially and then we want to slow it down at this exact point. I'm going to hold command and click if on windows control and click. So this sets a keyframe as you can see here. And now basically this splits the video into two parts. You can change the speed of the video of these parts separately. So we will move it up to make it fast and after the keyframe, we'll move it down to make it slow. Now when you play the video, the speed changes but it's very abrupt. I want it to be a bit subtle and gradual. I'll move the right part of the keyframe and the more you move, the more subtle the transition is going to be. To make it even smoother, you can change the shape of the curve and now the transition from the faster part to the slower is smooth and it looks great. Now when you're done editing the video, it's time to export it and convert the whole project into a single video file. First, we'll set the in and out points with I and O respectively. Then go to file, export, media. Now set the format to H.264. Make sure both the export video and audio options are selected. In the video tab, click on match source. Now I always check render at maximum depth. It will take more time to export comparatively, but I color grade my videos and I want the best quality possible. I set the profile as high, level as 5.2. If you can't change it, just untick this box. Then I change my bitrate settings. Now if you want the highest quality, then go with CBR. The bitrate is going to be constant throughout the video and you're going to get the best quality possible. The target bitrate depends on the resolution of the video. If you're exporting at 1080p, I will recommend 10 to 12 Mbps. If it's a 4K video like this one, I will prefer 60 to 70. Now you don't have to set all these settings every time. You can save this preset, use it with your videos and that's it, you're good to go. 
Hope you enjoyed this video guys. Let me know what more Premiere Pro tutorials you want to see in the comment section below. If this video helped you, press the like button. If you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe to the channel to support me. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.